What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Caesar. Caesar gets crypto, and we are talking about the DXY today. This is the uh, the dollar, the U.S. dollar currency index, based on all the global currencies around the world. Um, saying global currencies around the world, that's like saying the ATM machine. It's redundant. I could just say global currencies or currencies around the world. I don't need both. But anyways, um, <clears throat> you know, if we go to X.com here, uh, I've got this pulled up. Where, well, let's see if if I click X here. I made an X post. I said calling for the low on the DXY. This is July 14th at 99.914 on the weekly too. If we look at it right, it says week, one week right there. So on this weekly, that was right here on this little, you can see right, the comparison. That's that's right there. <clears throat> and at a lowest, at the lowest it went to, it went to 99.578. I called it at 99, what was it, 99.914. So close enough, you know. Um, to me, it was kind of obvious because we did have these like this like kind of lower this was like a almost like a trend line in itself this like lower half here and we were at the purple line where we've bounced before where we found resistance before we were bouncing it looked to be like we were going to bounce off of the oversold zone um, and now we actually have higher highs in the RSI and that can be a good thing that can be a bad thing so right now like technically if we can't get above this high and man it would be really nice in the next two hours and 37 minutes if we could close above That'd be 104.226. We're at 104.169. Now that is a little bit of a stretch for the DXY, but it could do that. We were already above that earlier. Um, but <clears throat> if in the next two hours and 37 minutes, it can move up above there, that would be encouraging because what that means is now this hidden bearish divergence is no longer there. And it's hidden bearish divergence because you have higher highs while maintaining lower highs on a closing basis. So um, getting a wick above here isn't enough. We want to see a weak close above this. And I think we're going to get that. I really do. I think we have some kind of like, you know, depending on how you want to call it, it could be like a triple bottom. You know, it could be an M. It could be a, you know, I think this is a reverse bow where you have your M here and then you're going to W out of this thing. Like your M is the bottom, but it's the reverse bow because it looks like a bow and arrow, right? And if it was, the arrow would go this way. But it's the reverse bow because the arrow is going to go this way. That's where the price action. And all in all, really what it is is just a giant W um, with an M in it. I, I think there's a name for this. I just don't know what the name is. I'm sure I'm not the first person in the world to identify this. It's not guaranteed to do great things, but generally you do get price action in the opposite direction. What would furthermore promote this, oh, also, you know, it, it could be an Eve and an Adam instead of an Adam and an Eve, you know, unconventional, but you are having like a V bottom out of this, which is nice to see. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I have to keep clearing my throat guys. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, I don't, I don't think I'm going to die though. So that's, that's okay. So looking at this thing, we are moving up right now. It would be really nice to get a close that's above this high because that would definitely, even if we don't get a move above this high before the weekends, which is okay, that would indicate to me that we are going to make a move higher from top to bottom here, probably up to this 1272, taking us out of this overall low range, which would give it this uh, significance, right? If we were to go at least to the 1272 here, that would definitely give this move significance enough to be like a breakout from this downside. Like this could have been a drop consolidation and now we're resuming the, the prevailing trend, which is to the upside. And you can see that here, you know, overall since 2008, since the housing market crisis, we've had lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. This is just another higher low. And of course we have highs, higher highs, higher highs. So I do think that we, we very well could be making our way up from here. Um, maybe not. Maybe we have lower to go overall. You know, it, it could. This could be a longer phase of consolidation. After all, we did consolidate here from 2015 all the way until 2021. Maybe we're in something like that now. Um, maybe that is the top until we break out of this overall range. Maybe we're maybe we're still range bound between like this whole whole area in itself for a while. That that could be. But one one way or another, I do think that closing above that previous week's close, which I think we're almost there, man. We're actually climbing right now. Um, Let's see, what is it again? 14 or 104.226. We're close, man. We're real close. Um, that would be very encouraging that we do break out of this high. And if we were to break out of this high or the, this lower high formation, we'd likely go to the 1272, which would be a breakout of here, which to me would imply that we would at least go you know, back to like somewhere, some significant retracements of this overall range from top to bottom here. Um, <clears throat> That could take us up to about 108 in evaluation. We could even go up to the 886 and we could go beyond that. This could be the start of furthering this trend to the upside, but maybe it's not. 
again, you know, you bounced off it here on the weekly, went up on the purple line right there. You literally tipped it over here. You found support on it, went up, found support on it again. You went up, but then you broke above it. You were hugging it. We're here. We're not hugging it. We just bounced right off of it. So I do think we're going to get more of a move like this. I mean, we kind of already have. Um, we might get more of a move like this, right? It's the beginning of that. You found resistance on it, but you hugged it right, and then eventually broke above it, found support, and you went you went off. So this uh, this purple line, the 123 moving average, at least on the weekly, the DXY seems to like that. On an RSI perspective, we are showing strength. We're definitely showing strength right now. Closing here would be in the bullish area of control, um, and it's a potential area where we could turn around. Don't get me wrong, but it would be nice. It would definitely be nice to see this thing. Oh wow. We're almost there, guys. We are climbing right now. We are we are climbing. It would be really nice to see this close above this week here. Um, on a daily basis, <clears throat> I have to keep clearing my throat, man. I'm I'm sorry. That's that's probably really annoying, you guys. But it's uh, it's better than talking like like I've I've got something in my throat. Um, let's see. You are very. You're not very overbought, but you're more overbought than you've been in a while. And you've been hanging out in this area, man. I think, I really do think this is the real deal. You know, short of a major turnaround over the next week to end the month, which could happen. Watch for that. You know, watch for that. Um, but this looks pretty good, in my opinion, for further continuation. That's my, I feel like I'm just like saying the same stuff over and over again. So I'm, I might cut it there. What does this mean for cryptos, for markets? Look at this. On the monthly, you double bottomed off the 50 and now you're coming out. I think, I really do think this thing wants to go higher. Um, what does this mean for the markets? You know, generally, not always, but generally, when the DXY is going up, markets go down, or markets have a harder time going up than whenever, whenever the DXY is going up. And a lot of people will say that Bitcoin and the DXY are inversely correlated, but I, I don't think that's true. If we take away, we can take away this long-term RSI. We don't need it. We're at 52. We're above the purple line. Good to know. Um, we can put a co correlation coefficient on. If you want to do this, click indicators on TradingView. Click indicators. Go to technicals. Slide down to C here and correlation coefficient. And what we're going to do is Bitcoin BTC USD on the index for all-time history's sake. And looking at this thing, I'm going to move this because I like I like my RSI, my short-term RSI on the bottom. Um, looking at this. They haven't been correlated, but they have bouts of correlation, right? And you can see if we were to like kind of time this, you can see that, I, I don't know, I wonder if we were to do like time, fib based time. No, maybe not fib based time, like cyclical lines. Here we go. From this low here in the, I want to, I want to get this close. Actually, let me see. I wonder, I just wonder. From that low to that low there, isn't that crazy shit, man? That low to that low to that low are all cyclically in line with each other. I wonder about the highs. If we take this high is a lot longer, so probably not. But that high kind of coincides with this low over here. I don't know. Um, what about the last one? Let's see. This high to this high here. Not so much. They're, they're close to each other, but not so much. Okay, but the lows are pretty close. And here we are, you know, a little bit. We had a little bit of an advancement on the lows here. Um, but whatever that it's not, it's not going to be perfect every time, but, but what this correlation coefficient, what this means you guys is whenever the dollar is moving up or moving down, Bitcoin is moving up or moving down with it. That's what that means from here on out as this, as this builds, as it goes up, that means they're moving in the same direction. So if the dollar looks good and we're at an area, I'm going to take away the lines now where it looks, in my opinion, you can just see it with your own eyes. It looks like we're done going lower. We've probably bottomed on this. looks like we're turning up. Bitcoin will probably go up with the dollar, and that's not that is not unheard of. That's happened before. If you want to see it for yourself, you go you press this little plus button up here, BTC USD again on the index. I'm going to do a new price scale because that's just how I like to roll. Um, I want to make this thing logarithmic, and if we're looking here, right, ever since Bitcoin's existence, they've both been in an uptrend. To say that they're not completely correlated, to say that they're inversely related, is is not 100% a lie, but it's not 100% a true either. Because you can see here, yes, at the top, this was at the low point of the dollar. And then at the bottom, this is at a high point of the dollar. But the dollar didn't shit the bed when Bitcoin started climbing, did it? It actually started to go up with it. And then it went down. And then it went with it. And then it went down. But where Bitcoin topped off, again, is at this low point of the DXY. And then here, Bitcoin had a top off. It went down. But the dollar didn't really, I mean, it, it continued to climb a little bit. But I don't know. You know, it, it did bottom out here on this first peak of the bull market, um, but the secondary peak, the dollar and Bitcoin went up together. 
They both have been going down together now since, uh, I mean, basically since September of last year, they've both been going down up until, I guess, up until December. So September to December, maybe actually September till January, something like that is when they were both going down together. Um, when did Bitcoin bottom? I think it bottomed actually a little bit before then. Let's see. Style, line, let's do candles. <clears throat> move you around here Bitcoin bottomed here actually okay so uh, again around the top the bottom whatever but I want to add the dollar the DXY had a very bad month here and Bitcoin also that's the same month that it found its bottom so they can move together and the main thing again that I want to really display is this correlation coefficient they <clears throat> they're decorrelated for most of their time, but they have bouts of correlation. And I think we're about to experience that. And, and that's a good thing because the dollar looks like it wants to move up and we want these things to correlate with each other if the dollar is going to move up. That doesn't mean Bitcoin has to move up now. This is on a monthly basis. The uh, Bitcoin can still do bad things over the like coming weeks. You know, can, I, I think we're close to the bottom of this area, but for Bitcoin, I think we're close to the bottom, but we're not quite there yet. Um, I would think, you know, in the next couple of weeks we will, but I kind of expect September to be a green month for the dollar and for Bitcoin, or at least not a horrible red month for Bitcoin. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Let's see here. I'm going to take this away, and we're going to go on the weekly now. Just see this correlation coefficient still. It is. It looks like it's declining a little bit, so maybe as the dollar goes up over the next couple weeks, Bitcoin goes down, but that just lines up with what I've been saying, right? But again, you can just see where they have moments where they're closer to being correlated, closer to being absolutely not related at all, inverse of each other. It just, you know, it goes in phases. And I would say that right now on the weekly and on the monthly, it looks like we're at the bottoming of the decorrelation phase, and we're starting to form the the trend that'll take us to a more correlated uh, Bitcoin DXY pair. So getting away from that now, going back to just the DXY, I'll take this away here and we can just look at the price. Um, you know, again, on the, on the, let's do the monthly here. You did double bottom off of the 0 0.5, double bottom right off of that there. And then you did, let's see here. You did, what was the fib that it's at? From low to high you are holding the 0.5. You're holding it quite nicely, actually. And you've been flirting with this 382 enough. I do think you want to break above it. Um, something like this, you really could see a move back to the 236 or potentially even the 0 0.069 or potentially beyond that. Um, but again, I would expect the dollar to have some kind of major significant top whenever, I mean, it doesn't need to have a top when Bitcoin has a bottom. I don't know, man. Hard to say. I don't know if it's done yet, though. That's that's just my whole point that I'm trying to say. I don't think that it's done yet. Ignore what I was just saying about the dollar having a top, because um, I do think it's going up right now, and we'll see. We'll just see what this weekly looks like as it develops. You know, at the moment, at the moment, you are close, man. You are really close to negating that hidden bearish divergence, which would be nice to see on the dollar. I say it's nice to see because I want to see this thing. I want to see it go up so that assets go down and we can get some cheaper stuff. But again, that's not going to be for long. That correlation coefficient showed us that that Bitcoin and the dollar are getting ready to move together. And if the dollar looks good, Bitcoin's going to look good. That's all I really got to say, guys. I keep spinning my wheels here. So without any further ado, that's all I got for you. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to see more. And I'm going to drink some water. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.